here that don't know what we did. Um, this narrow project is the event of the MMS and for uh, virtual machines, so we were doing stuff with VMware. And uh, that ended up being a, being a big part of our problem. But in terms of what we actually learned about the project, the, uh, I think the biggest thing, one of the biggest things I took away from this was how to have an effective team. Um, we started off early on, uh, we didn't do any meetings at all. We occasionally got together and we'd say, all right, this is what we need to do for the project, and uh, that was about it. And then we trust each other to get work done on our own, and that didn't work out very well. Uh, the workflow got really imbalanced, so we actually uh, were forced to start doing work meetings and have a log for our second term. And they ended up, uh, they were all right, but they were mostly just us sitting around doing individual work, and instead we were just checking up on each other, and then that was, a, that was a big trust thing. So once we worked out the, uh, the work ethic problems, we moved on to just doing status and planning meetings, and I think that was the sweet spot for us. We, we uh, got on board with the, uh, the scrum stuff towards the end of the quarter. Um, we really got coached along by our advisor on that. So I would say if you guys are curious about the process stuff, when you start next year, go to your advisor because they're going to know a lot about the stuff off them and have them walk through it. It saves time in the long run. <coughs> Another thing that saves time in the long run is our planning. We jumped into the code right away, and our concept for a prototype was just start developing a program and you know, doing some kind of working version of it early on, which was a bad idea because uh, what we ended up doing was we just said, all right, this is what we're going to do. We've got this framework, we're going to follow this project. We're going to do TDD, and we just said we're going to do all these things. And we never really kind of got them. Um, so when you do your planning, you get into detail. Don't just say what you're doing, but say how you're going to do it, who's going to do it, you know, put names to jobs. And that way you know that it'll get done. If it isn't getting done, you can hold somebody accountable for it, and you can get on their ass for it. But, um, Uh, another thing I'd say is don't be afraid of complexity when dealing with both uh, the actual framework that you're going to use to develop if you use one at all, or the uh, tools that you're going to use. We started out, we are we're using uh, web forms, ASP and web forms for our thing because we assumed that, that was going to be easier for us. And every time we found out that it was actually a lot harder than doing something like NBC, which was a lot more, um, it was more like natural web development than web forms was. But we just assumed that would be more complex. So if you actually want to do stuff beforehand, and you find out you know, what are all the gotchas of all these different things, then you're not going to have to switch halfway through or run into any walls or anything like that. And uh, make sure it's testable. Make sure it's something you can actually test. They got a good framework. Um, yeah, so that was uh, issues with our architecture. Some issues that we have with the tools was uh, we were initially just using GitHub, and that has like a built in tracker, but it's not very, it doesn't have a lot of features to it, and we weren't really able to track metrics. And towards the end of the term, we switched to Redmine, um, and it's amazing how much of a difference it makes, just this little green bar that you have for your milestones, and you can see that kind of fill up along the way, instead of just like, you know, you got this list of all these tasks to get done, when you actually see like a little visual of it, it makes such a big difference. It's crazy, and you have all these other features. Because um, a lot of the a lot of the things that we ran into was we thought our project was going to be very simple. Uh, we thought you know the requirements for this were pretty bare bones. We had this thing done by the uh, you know, hopefully by Christmas, maybe just a bit afterwards. And uh, our requirements just grew, and we ran yeah we ran more and more issues with VMware. When you're working with an unsupported VM version of VMware. Um, you know, you can't hope for things to get fixed of that eventually, right? so we ended up having to fill in for a lot of the uh, stuff that didn't work, but they didn't get work, work in it before they discontinued support. And then lastly, on testing, uh, we already we already went on about this, but uh, as we recently found out, what we thought, where we thought we were done with features, we were pretty much done with coding by the, uh, right after the beginning of spring term. We've recently been finding out that uh, we have a lot more issues than we thought we did. So if you don't, you know, if you don't know how to automate testing very well, figure it out. You know, use this time in the summer. If you can't get started.
start a project at least use it to do something either figuring out the technologies that you're going to use or you know it takes you can run through a tutorial for a framework in a few hours and that makes a, that makes a little difference if you're not trying to get everybody on the team to do that you know during the beginning of the order obviously you know the language is like C sharp JavaScript and stuff and uh, yeah but back to testing if you if we would have started testing earlier, we wouldn't be where we are right now. We're in a lot of trouble right now with that. We're trying to get stuff to work last minute. And if we would have done testing, like, like I said, you know, we said we were going to do TDD, but we never really figured out how to do it. We never really you know, put somebody in charge of it or, or uh, enforce the we to do it. So do it ahead of time.